listeners, this is John Cole. As usual, I'll be hosting this program, which has been broadcasted live from Margaret Thatcher's bedroom. Mind you, she's deceived us all. All of us, that is, who thought she was a nice, clean woman. All I can see lying around her bedroom carpet here are some Plicity press-on towels. And I'll tell you the worst than that. They've been plastered with strawberry jam, but nevertheless, I'm sure we're not going to waste much more time in talking about Margaret Thatcher's dirty habits. Now, on tonight's program, we've got Gareth Fitzgerald from the Republic of Ireland, Gerard Fitt, Danny Morrison, Tom King, Harold McClusker and Dr. Paisley, who will also be participating in tonight's program. We've also got an inside audience who are disgusted with the social security changes. Margaret Thatcher obviously looking a few more pounds for a bank account. Now, we want to go firstly to the rally against the Anglo-Irish Agreement. Not so much about the Anglo-Irish Agreement, but the actual rally itself. Now, firstly, we're going to talk to Dr. Paisley about the behaviour of his loyalists, about the behaviour of his so-called loyalists, may I emphasise. In November 1986, which I think they ran a riot, something like we see in Beirut, they also broke RUC men's arms, broke their legs and God knows what else. My word, it was a disgrace to the public in Northern Ireland to see on their television screens what these so-called Protestants were doing in the city centre at that particular time and date. Now, what do you say to that Dr Paisley? Well, I must uh, say straight here that the RUC must have come straight into fucking Muckamore Abbey, Mr Cole, and into an RUC uniform. Because they can't even fucking count. The RUC claimed there were only 75,000 people there. Well, I stood there on the balcony. And I counted 250,000 skulls. And uh, Mr. Molyneux was speaking at the time, and he even counted. And there were 250,000 uh, people there. And no matter what Sir John Herman or his fucking puppets from the South say, uh, we're uh, correct in our assessment of 250,000 people. Right, well, how do you account for the damage, Dr. Paisley? I mean, there were shops and premises wrecked there. I mean, there was golf balls flying all over the place, and indeed the RUC were being pelted with them. You were meant to conduct a peaceful rally, but it turned out to be something you would see in Beirut. So what happened? Well, firstly, Mr. Cole, I didn't order anyone to break into the SS Birch and get these fucking golf balls flying. My flock were there to support the Protestant cause against this anglo irish agreement. And from what I can remember, the filth were there provoking the Protestants, and therefore caused a pitch battle riot in the city centre. And I must also emphasize to make this abundantly clear to Sir Jack Bourbon that the RUC were lucky my Protestants didn't break into fucking brattles. There would have been bullets flying, never mind fucking golf balls. Right, we'll see. Well, I'm sure Mr. Fitz's not going to be a bit pleased about this because I've got an RUC report here in front of me. Now, Mr. Fitt, on that same day, the RUC claimed that you were in the back of SS Moore looting and were seen taking or trying to pull a sink unit out of the wall. That's a lot of bollocks, ain't getting a fucking name blacking against here. It'll must have call your fucking dick, Jerry. Now, hold on a minute, let me read on here. Also, Mr. Fitt, <coughs> I've got a frog in my throat here. Also, Mr. Fitt, you stole 20 golf clubs, which was under your jumper. You also stole snooker cues and leather sports bags. You got caught because you tried to sell an RUC inspector a snooker cue. Well, I don't deny that there, like, but uh, I was threatened by loyalists. They get in the SS mood and fucking rug all around me. Fuck when I came out again, one of the loyalists had the cheek and the audacity. He asked me to take ten golf clubs around his fucking house off the neat and road. He must have thought it was fucking mad of it. So you are fucking mad, you silly wee bastard. You trying to sell a fucking snooker cue to a police inspector. Fuck's sake, Jerry. You have a mentality of a fucking two-year-old, you silly wee bastard. Now, hold on a minute now. Give it over there. Now, hold on, Mr. Cool. I don't want to be insulted about this. All about this. Your fucking face is an insult of humanity. You have a face on you like a well-festered fart, Jerry. Right, now, give it over, Dr. Teasley. We've had enough of that. Now, Tom King, what do you say about all this outbreak of violence on the demonstration day? Well, it was a blatant attack on uh, these shops and the RUC. And uh, it was totally uncalled for. Uh, these so-called Protestants and loyalists 
aren't going to achieve anything the way they're behaving. And uh, I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again, that uh, this anglo Irish agreement is here to stay. Uh, no matter what the loyalists, Mr Molyneux or Mr Paisley does, uh, Margaret Thatcher will be the other one that will make the change otherwise. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, it was a blatant attack and very much uncalled. Mr Keane, if I were you, I'd shut my fucking face. I'll break your fucking face from after starting. Mr Paisley, I'm not going to take any of your fucking nonsense this time. Shut your fucking face, Mr Keane, I'm warning you. Mr Paisley, will you stop slapping me around the bloody face? Now stick my boot in your bollocks the next time you interrupt me with him speaking. Well, let me tell you, Mr Keane, you talk about violence, you talk about destruction, intimidation. It's you and that other her bag, Margaret Thatcher. That seems to get her to all this. Violence, arnicky and death. So don't give me your shite about Protestant this and Protestant that, you pummy bastard. And not only that, Mr. Cole, I've seen a member of the RUC having a pish outside eight shackles. There wasn't much to see, mind you. What piss are you talking about, Mr. Beasley? No, I'm talking about the size of his wee Willy Wonka. I've seen a bigger fucking root on a field mouse. Now, gentlemen, we want to know about both communities. Have they got faith in our security forces? Or do we want better protection from them? Now, in today, we've got Danny Morrison, the spokesman for the Sinn Féin. Right, Mr. Morrison, what's your view on that? Well, there's not a lot I can say about it. Only to say that uh, the UDR is a paramilitary organization. And they're very best and once it. And the nationalist people don't have any faith in them at all. As far as I'm concerned, the UDR may as well be in the UDA. Well, Mr. Paisley, what do you say about that? Is that a fair comment from Mr. Morrison? Well, I would say that it's not Danny Morrison, but Fanny Morrison you're speaking to. He's behaving like a big girl's fucking blouse. Does he really think the UDR is out to get the likes of him and his other bloodthirsty vampires? Does he? Well, say they are right to get them. Why the hell the fucking hurry up and get the bastards once and for all? Mr. Morrison, you're commenting Dr. Paisley there. Well, Paisley's a cheek to talk about anybody being a vampire. He's certainly got the fucking teeth for one. And so sort of he went down to suck a blood out of his neck, he's liable to slip and swallow their fucking head along to say his mouth is. My Mr. Boss, I'll break your fucking ribs if you speak to me like that again, you finian bastard. Mr. Pussy, look, you don't fucking scare me. I'll fucking slap it. Now, gentlemen, settle yourselves down there. I'll break a fucking neck, that bastard. Give us a fucking drink. Fucking dying. Bastard, he is talking to me like that. Now, Mr. Pussy, what do you think of the RUC? Are they giving 100% protection to both communities in Northern Ireland? Just how long they get a fucking drink and I'll tell you whether they are or not. That's uh, uh, fucking rotten, that. No, they're not given 100% uh, security. They are given 100% to the nationalists, though. They're around the falls road, rick, licking the fucking residents, bollocks, left, right, and center. Fuck, nobody ever licked my fucking bull with it. They were scraping the barrel, Jerry, licking your fucking bollocks. Hey, watch my fucking bull, you know. Hey, watch him. How'd you get them out of the fucking bag, then, Jerry? You know what I'm fucking talking about, for fuck's sake, stop acting a cunt. You silly wee bastard, you. Right, now, you two give it over, let the fool the fucking two years out. Right, Harold McCluster, do you think the security's tight here? Well, if it's as tight as Margaret Thatcher, we'd all be safe. Uh, well, it isn't as tight as I thought it would be. But uh, I, I would like to see a bit more security up around the uh, Newton Ards Road area. Well, what do you think Mrs. Thatcher's doing about it? Is she doing anything about it? No, I'm sure she's doing fuck all about it, Mrs. Thatcher. You know what Mrs. Thatcher's like? Mrs. Thatcher's only worried about her hairdo. She's not fucking worried about people in Northern Ireland, is she fuck? All right, well, we'll leave that for now, and we'll just go on to something else here. I'm afraid to say that uh, we're not going to get too far today. And... Oh, sorry about that, Mr. Cole, sorry. Fuck's sake, nobody tell me you're going to start that again, Dr. Paisley. No, actually, I had an Indian bee last night, and that's uh, probably the result of that. Sorry about that. Well, we'll leave uh, better protection from the security forces for now. <laughs> Now, in with us tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is a doctor from the Royal Victoria Hospital who will be explaining the need for surrogacy. Yes, we're on to the topic of surrogate mothers. Is it right for a couple who can have children to give birth to a baby, then for a fee of around £5,000 to £10,000, sell that child to a couple who can't have children? Now, Dr. White, what do you think of this idea? 
Well, actually, I think it's quite legal to do this sort of business, which uh, brought a lot of happiness to childless couples throughout the world now. And uh, take a fee of uh, a childless couple should be compensation enough for the couple who have had the child. Because if this sort of thing uh, didn't go on, then it leads to marriage breakups, sometimes suicide, and on other occasions, wife battering. And would you believe, on a very rare occasion, husband battering. All right. Well, do you think the couple who had the child in the first place tend to forget about the infant after they've accepted the compensation? In some cases, yes, but I'm sure there's uh, a lot who don't. You know, uh, some people who I've talked to in the United States of America just do it for the money. You mean to say, Mr. White, they're breeding for a deed? Breed for money? Is that what they're doing? Well, if you want to put it politely, Dr. Paisley, yes, so that's the way you want to put it. Right, now. Dr. Garth Fitzgerald, imagine you'd be totally against what Dr. White has told us here tonight. Certainly I don't think that with a name like Dr. White he should be fitting fucking funny pods onto women instead of coming in here and trying to incite people to start up a fucking cattle market for selling skulls. He doesn't have any feeling at all, he's just a man who's just a, a fucking nymph, that's what he is. He should go and put his head on the line, preferably a fucking railway line. I'm just a bit fed up listening to silly cunt. Well, I, 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 I've never thought I would hear you talking like that, Mr. Fitzgerald. What a fucking disappointment about this man coming in here to this program and I bring in a lot of fucking filth, fucking sessions for £5,000. is not my sort of fucking thing to talk about. Right, well, all right. Dr. Paisley, what have you to say about this? Well, for the first time in my life, I'm going to agree with this Celtic man on my right. I think we were all to think like Fanny Pad White there. We wouldn't know who was fucking who. And in other words, we'd have a town overrun with little bastards. And that's pretty politely, Mr. Cole. Right, now, what's your reaction to this jerry fit? Well, I've got a few kids of my own. And I wouldn't fucking sell them. Fuck's sake, you couldn't give the bastards away for fuck's sake. Hey, long, Mr. Fitz, there's no need for that. It's ridiculous for any couple just to have a knocking session for 5,000 pounds. What's the fuck? I was getting 5,000 for every screw I fucking had. Now, hold on, Mr. Fitz, there's no need for that. Mr. Fitz just fucking jealous because nobody would buy his brats. And not only that, Mr. Fitz. I have got in front of me the price list for flogging ankle snappers. Well, for a Protestant, you can pay up to 15,000 pounds. For a Teague, you can only get a mere 1,000 pounds. And for a nigger, you can only get a tenner. Why's a nigger only going for a tenner? Well, would you pay a lot of money for something you're going to fucking check to death, Mr. Fitt? Well, I suppose you've got a point there, like you got a point there. Well, if there's any Negroes out there listening, we're very sorry for the insults. Fuck, I'm not sorry you, Mr. Fitt. Fucking sure I'm not. They're only good for one thing, and that's fucking Pete Ricketts, the whole fucking lot of... Right, now, there's no need for that. Donnie Morrison or Danny or whatever your name is, Fanny. What have you to say about surrogacy? Well, it's a disgrace to hand a child over to any two people, uh, especially strangers. And even for the sum of £5,000 or even £15,000, it's still not worth it. I think of the fact that this is going on... It's just going to be uh, a, a field day for prostitution. Well, in that case, Mr. Boris, you better get your wife off the fucking street, Slain. Look, Mr. Fizz, I don't think that's fucking one bit national. My wife's a very respectable fucking herb, I guess. That's what she's a very respectable. Don't you give me that fucking shit, Mr. Boris, or I'll come across your fucking jaw, you bastard. Oh, Mr. Fizz, I'm not going to fucking stop it. You're going to fucking take that and that and... Now, you two give it over there. I'll fucking kill him, Mr. Cole. I'll kill the bastard. Get him out of here, the finian bastard he is. Hey, hold on now. You all right, Mr. Morrison? You got the fucking jaw carried off me. Well, get back up off the ground there and stop fucking praying. Get up. Right now, you two are getting out of fucking order and I ain't going to have to bounce the two of you out of here any more of it. Now, Gareth Fitzgerald, you had a slight problem in getting your wife pregnant. How did you get over the stress? He must have had any fucking lead in his pencil. Of course I've got lead in my fucking pencil, Mr. Paisley. It wasn't me anyway, it was the fucking wife. Her velopian tubes were fucking blocked up in mucus or something. I don't know what the fuck was wrong with it. I would say you were probably fucking making your wife run about with hand grenades hanging out of her front passage. Maybe it was shite that was stuffed up, but I don't fucking know you're trying to smuggle grenades into the north, Mr. Fitzgerald. No, oh, Mr. Fitzgerald, you don't seem to fucking understand that I am a decent fucking uh, law-abiding citizen, and there's no way that I would lower myself to carry or smuggle weapons either th through my wife's front passage or or uh, even a, a hold-off bike. There's no way I would carry an explosive into the north. You give me that, you bastard. We all know what you are. Now, give it over, Dr. Paisley. You're getting worse, sir. Now, Mr. Fitzgerald, go on there. 
Well, to answer your question, Mr. Cole, the four is fucking so rudely interrupted there, but Mr. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm sorry, Mr. Cole. Honest to God, I'm sorry. Sorry about that, Mr. Fitzgerald. I'm sorry. You're a fucking land bastard. Every time I go to talk, you're fucking farting in the face. I'm sorry about it. Fuck's sake, I had an Indian, ra- I had an Indian meal last night. Fucking shit, land out of me, Mr. Cole. I might have to use your lavatory. Not again, Dr. Pease. I'm afraid uh, Margaret Thatcher hasn't got the facilities here. You'll just have to, if you're going to shake, you're going to have to go in a wee corner there and do it. Don't fucking underestimate me, Mr. Cole. I would do it. Right now, Mr. Fitzgerald, you were going to say there. Well, to answer your question, I tried and I tried for a very long time to get the wife pregnant, and bingo, I finally found the right hole. Oh, you had it in the wrong hole then? Well, uh, uh, well I thought maybe the belly button w- would be more near to the baby and uh, th- th- rather than her front passage. So I tried my desperate uh, utmost to try and penetrate her uh, 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 belly button. You're fucking daft, Mr. Fitzgerald, you know that. You're fucking bin lid. Now, we're going to go on to this issue of capital punishment. It's been debated in the Lords for I don't know how long now, and they're trying to bring back the rope. Should we bring back the rope or what? Firstly, I want to put that question to you, Mr. King. Well, it's a very difficult choice to make, Mr. Cole, uh, when a man, or indeed a woman, has his or her life in the hands of a judge. I think the only... Only maybe in certain circumstances, and in rare cases, it uh, would be possible to use capital punishment uh, in the cases of uh, the like the IRA, who uh, carry out and murder innocent people or security forces. They should face a bit of their own medicine. I think that's uh, only proper. Well, Mr. Fitt, what's your opinion on the rope? I'd say it's only an incitement to murder more people. I mean, if I were to kill a pro demora, and I knew I was going to get fucking hung for it, I'd just say to myself, well, fuck this. I ain't going to go out here and fucking wipe it all around me. Mr. Fitt, there'll be no chance of you dying by the fucking rope anyway. The back of your neck is fucking thick with shit. The fucking James, so I wouldn't go through it for fuck's sake. Look, Mr. Pusey, hold on a minute. Me and you've been all right so far the fucking this, during this program. You've been on Danny Martin's back. Think fuck Danny Martin's come in here today. Or I'd have been getting a fucking hummer. Now just keep off my fucking back. Right, that's right, Mr. Fitt. You tell him. Now, Harold McCluster, what's your opinion on this issue and bringing back the rope? Well, I'm in full support of bringing back the rope. It should have been brought back years ago. I mean, we have got, uh, we've got nothing to lose anyway. The IRA are killing and maiming people to this day, and uh, will continue to do so. So, maybe if an example was shown out of one of these IRA murderers, I might put a stop to it. Mr. Paisley, what have you to say on this one again? Well, I would like to see IRA men suffer a more enduring death rather than get the rope. The rope is too quick for the IRA men. Well, what do you recommend then, Dr. Paisley? Well, I would say that if an IRA man is convicted of a murder, then he should not be hung, but should be sent to a local pathologist, who would in turn then carry an autopsy without the use of an anesthetic while this murderer is still alive? Or better still, why don't they just send the fucking murderer to the local abattoir and slaughter the bastard the way he slaughtered his victims? Well, it sounds a bit rough, that. They made a pity or eight did. Is that the same for Protestants that they murder an innocent Catholic? No, it is not indeed. No, it is not. If a member of the UDR, a member of the UVF, murder an IRA man or an INLA man, I'll send him to fucking the Bahamas for a fortnight. Free of charge, I'll pay all expenses. Now, Danny Morrison, what do you say about the return of the rope? Look, Margaret Thurton and Tom Keane and their mother MPs could put all a leg if they bring it back a rope. But that won't stop the balance here. We still want the withdrawal of British resistance, and until we get that resistance withdrew, then we made a peace and stability. But if it doesn't go, then the killing and the violence and the maiming still goes on. That's as simple as that, Mr. Boston. How'd you like me to fucking maim you, you beardy bastard? Look, Mr. Pizzi, there's no fucking barbed wire around me, you know. Look, I'll fucking kill you now, Mr. Martin. Now, you two give it over again. Mr. Fitt, separate them right, you Ian. Fucking ways up now. Right, Danny, sit in your fucking house. Fuck's sake. Bastard you are, Mr. Boss. You provoked me all afternoon. It's just fucking provoking. Now, give it over, you two. Mr. Morrison, this is your first appearance on this program. I would advise you to keep your fucking trap shut or I'll give you a shave of your broken bottle. Now, we're going to go on to something else here. Um, uh, Jerry Fitt, again, I want your views on this capital punishment. Well, I think that the people in Northern Ireland do want to see the rope brought back. Mr. Fitt, if they brought the rope back, you'd be the first bastard on it, and I'd make sure of it. 
Now, Mr. Paisley, every time something develops here, you're in the fucking thick of it. Now, would you kindly keep out of it and let people talk when they're being talked to? Now, that's all we're going to talk about on capital punishment. We're going to go here now for a short tea break. Do you want your tea and biscuits now, Mr. Coe? Yes, if you could just bring the tray over there, we'll have a cup of tea or... Well, you'd be nothing stronger than that, Mr. Coe. I was expecting something like a battle of patching or something. No, I don't think we have anything stronger than that. Just bring them over, down and I'll, and I'll pour them out. Do you want tea, Mr. Billy? Take our sob off, you fucking herbaggy, for fuck's sake. I want something stronger than that. There's no need to talk there like that, Mr. Paisley. There's no need for that. Jerry, how many sugar do you want? Oh, I've got a bit four there, for fuck's sake. Fucking Danny. Well, you've got tea all right enough, Mr. Cook. Well, have a wee drop of QC here if you want it. Just get it under that fucking glass or never mind him. Bastard said fuck all anyway. Right, who wants a Kit Kat? I'll get a bit of it. No, I, I, I actually miss Mrs. Thatcher not being here. If Mrs. Thatcher had him in here, I'd give her a couple of fingers of my Kit Kat. Take his whole fucking hand, that bastard. A couple of fingers wouldn't keep her happy. What are you doing there, Gal Fitzgerald? Oh, I was just admiring the teapot. You're not thinking of sticking up your fucking coat like I'm watching you. Give us that fucking teapot, you silly bastard. What's a pity? Fussy, I'm trying to get my fucking tea poured out. Fuck off away to the restaurant and get your own, you bastard. Uh, uh, uh. Wait, Russ. Wait, Russ. What do you want, Mr. Dizzy? Get over here by that fucking scrub on that and get me something to eat. I haven't got no sandwiches. I'm not talking about a pig. I want to have a pig away down to the fucking butcher's and get me one. Right now, are we all settled in here? Because we're going to go on to our next topic very soon. Now, gentlemen, we want to talk about the going on, or the goings on, I beg your pardon, in homosexuality. Yes, we're talking about homosexuality in Northern Ireland. Now, Jerry Fitt, why do you think we have so many people who indulge in homosexuality? Well, there's not enough crumpet running about, Mr. Cole, for a start. What's eating crumpet got to do with it? I'm not I'm talking about pussy. Right, now, firstly, you were talking about crumpets. Now you're talking about cats. Will you make your fucking mind up, Mr. Fit, what you're talking about here? Mr. Cool, you're a fucking numbskull. I'm referring to women, for fuck's sake. There's not enough to go around. To go around where, Mr. Fit? Round my fucking house with scrubbing brace. I'm fucking fed up with this. Well, Mr. Fit, I'd like you to make it clear about what you're talking about. The listeners don't even know what you're talking about. Well, for fuck's sake, you're not someone. You should know. You should know what I'm talking about. Well, right then, let's get on with it. Well... I reckon these gay lords are getting their cakes and fucking eating it. They're humping men one minute, the next minute they're interfering with our women. And this, of course, is one reason why I'm running about with fucking AIDS. Or sorry, why other people's running about with AIDS. I wouldn't surprise me, Mr. Fit, if you were fucking ringing with AIDS, you dirty wee bastard. I'm a pity, fucking no need for that, like. Right, give it over. Now, Mr. Keane, why is Northern Ireland the only country in which homosexuality is illegal? Well, Mr. Kell, Northern Ireland is unfortunately a country which, uh, has enough to condemn with, including murder, violence, robberies, and uh, the thought of legalising homosexuality would be uh, just another hindrance to uh, uh, decent people in Northern Ireland who want to live a normal and uh, peaceful life. I mean, I wouldn't uh, fancy taking my wife out for a day's shopping and suddenly looking up a back entry and seeing two fruit merchants engaged in a turd punching session. It would be a terrible sight. I reckon it would be. I reckon it'd be a terrible, painful one as well. Now I know how the wife feels. Now, Mr. McClusker, what's your views on these turd rumpers or punchers or bum chums or whatever you want to call them? Well, I think it's a sin before the Almighty. I think these people should be taken to their local church and cleansed with holy water. Cleansed with fucking ass with more like a fucking do your way with the bastards, a whole lot of... No, I think it's a sin, Mr. Pierce, to be honest with you. Because these people can't get their hold of their own people, so they have to turn to the, each other. They can't get sex with their opposite partners like women or whatever. So they have to turn to another man. And this is what we call homosexuality. Well, we all know that, Mr. McClusker. We all fucking know that. Right. Thank you, Mr. McClusker, for your view there. Jerry Fitt, you your hand up there. I heard, Mr. Cole. I don't know what it is, but a fucking terrible pain in my hole. 
Oh, fuck. I don't know what it is. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'll have to go to the toilet. Oh, for fuck's sake. My, my sage busted here. Fuck's sake, all right. For fuck's sake. You're stinking, you dirty wee bastard. Get out. Fucking stinking wee bastard, yes. Get him out the fuck. Away to the toilet or something, you dirty bastard. Jesus Christ, I've never heard a fart like that in my life. Just holes in core order. Right now. Oh, dear, dear. We're getting all fucked up here. Now, Tom King, you say you want these homosexuals banned. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to curb them? Well, obviously, well, there's going to be more security around the streets of Northern Ireland, up back entries and wherever else. Up back entries? Do you mean to say you're going to have soldiers and RUC men up a back entry? Should they literally end up humping each other, Mr. King, the way they're fucking about these days? I don't think there's any need for that, Mr. Kelly. I think our security forces do a great job in Northern Ireland, and uh, they will do their utmost to cut out this homosexuality. Good. Now, Jerry Fitz just come back. Well, you a bit better now. Oh, fuck, that's all right now. Fuck, I'm glad I get rid of that. I fucking dropped it before I got to the toilet, would you believe? Fucking trees are plastered on it, but sure, that's beside the point. Wait, you want to talk about these fruits here? Yes, you say you have a friend in London who's gay. Yes, that's right, I have a friend in London, he's gay, and he's telling me that, uh, I don't know if it's fucking true or not, like. He told me if you were to throw it into the old mud pit, it's a good cure for pills. I wonder if it's true, I don't know. Well, I would reckon it's a good cure for getting your cock and your balls full of shite. Now, Dr. Paisley, what's your opinion on this issue? Well, I'll tell you in a wee minute after I get a fucking drink, Mr. Cole. Fucking absolutely busted for a drink. You're very fond of the old patching, Mr. Paisley. But I better believe it. It's the best thing. Yes, yeah, fucking tea pats, anyway. Well, set it out of the road. Get it out of the fucking road. Throw it out of the road. Hold on a minute to get a drink of this. Uh, oh, that best of gear, that. Right now, go ahead, Mr. Paisley, on your issue on these uh, homosexuals. Well, we've talked about gays here, Mr. Cole. I hope we're not forgetting about the lesbians. There's more lesbians running about than homosexuals, male prostitutes I'm talking about. Well, what are you talking? Are you talking about male prostitutes, male homosexuals? Or... Well, you know what I mean, Mr. Cole. We're talking about the, the gay lords, men who participate with each other. The women are doing the same. Why are we not talking about the women? Well, that'll be another topic for discussion later on. Right. Well, long as we don't forget it. I think that homosexuality, male homosexuality, is a despicable and a deploring act of self-indulgence. And the perpetrators should have their testicles and their firing pins extracted with a pair of pliers. And that would therefore make our society a safer place to live instead of having these fucking fruity bastards walking our streets. We'll only end up in a town full of fucking liberal arties. Now, that's not very nice, Dr. Pearson. You know that man's dead. Well, we all know he's dead. And we all know why he died. The bastard got one beef in Jackson too, man. Well, that's not very nice, Mr. Paisley. It's not nice at all. Now, Mr. Morrison, what have you got to say about this business? Well, I think of homosexuals and lesbians are at least the are where he's not Ireland. I don't particularly care who's fucking rooting who. My main concern lies with the troubles in Northern Ireland. Uh, they're a more different and more serious fucking thing to talk about than fucking homosexuals. I'm not worried about homosexuals. Then I put it to you, Mr. Morrison, if your son were to grow up and turned out to be a homosexual, what would your reaction be then? Well, then I'd just have to take a fucking knees of him. Well, that wouldn't stop him from banging away, Mr. Morrison. He doesn't use his legs for fucking sexual interference. Mind you, it takes all sorts. A final word from Mr. Fitt again. Do you think our chat here will make homosexuals think again before they indulge in bum chumming, Mr. Fitt? Well, from what I've heard, it's fucking turned me on. Listen, these tell the fucking truth. If it turned me into a homo. I mean, they're getting the best of both worlds, Mr. Cole. And all I'm getting at the moment is a same old fucking smelly arsehole. And I'm fucking brained off it. Because my face is all never out of it. No, I think there'll be a raise in homosexuality in Northern Ireland because of our chat. Because people's going to wonder what they're fucking missing. I think I'll wait and have a run out of the night. Right, well, as long as you don't run in the fucking lamppost with your eyesight, you've got very bad eyes, Mr. Fitz, to take, take care of that. But fuck all of eh? Talking about the eye in the back of your arse. Right, well, gentlemen, we're going to leave the fruits to it for now, and we're going to go on to another issue for discussion. <laughs> Right now, listeners, we're going to go on to the Pope's awaited visit. Yes, Pope John Paul is talking about coming to the south and the north of Ireland. Now, he's thinking of coming, would you believe, on the 12th of July. Are you delighted with this news, Mr. Fitt? 
Oh, I am all for it. It's been a while since I had a fucking lick and chest. Oh, I am all for it. I've always wanted to meet the man of holiness. He'll be full of fucking holes. He comes over here in a fucking twat of July, Mr. Cole. I'm telling you that now. I take it, Mr. Paisley, you're against his visit? Oh, yes, I totally condemn his visit here on the 12th of July. Why didn't he make it for the 11th of July instead? Well, what difference does that make? Well, if he had been here for the 11th of July, we could have stuck that bully bastard on top of the bonfire. That's a real and proper mascot. That would have been a great sight to see the bully bastard melting down under the wood. Right, well, that's not very nice. Now, well, then again, that's an or what I would call a very warm reception. But nevertheless, Mr. Keane, obviously there's going to be a very heavy security presence if the Pope does decide to come to the south and north of Ireland. Yes, well, uh, every man and woman from all aspects of security will be used to ensure that... <coughs> oh, for fuck's sake, who's that? So every day, uh, Mr. Keane, so every day. Right, as I was saying there, everybody's going to be used uh, uh, to give the, the Pope John Paul the maximum security that he needs. There'll also be a helicopter surveillance and uh, the use of sniffer dogs. Now, Jerry Fitt, would you like to take the Pope on a tour of West Belfast and maybe the Short Strand? Certainly I'm his fucking man, no problem. I'd take him in and show him the conditions in which the nationalist people have to live in here. And maybe I'd take him to the local bar, maybe, and let him buy me a paint or two. Would you not buy him a paint, Mr. Fitt? What the fuck, my money, that bastard's kid, you must be joking out with. Would you not be afraid of anyone shooting him whilst you were giving him a tour of Belfast? No, wouldn't it? And if anyway anybody did fucking plug him. I'd be in his fucking pockets before he hit the fucking deck. You fucking better believe it. Yes, we all know what you are, Mr. Fit. You're a fucking scrubber, you bastard. You're a scrubber. Well, thank you for your comments there, Mr. Fit. Now, Fanny Morrison, I take it you're delighted with the possibility of the Pope visiting here. Look, Mr. Cool, would you fucking stop calling me fucking Fanny? Or else I'll break your fucking neck. Who do you think you're talking to, you beardy bastard, you? Right now, Fanny, wage up, or Donny, wage up. Fuck sake, Mr. Cool, don't call him Fanny for fuck's sake. Call him Donny. I'll call him whatever I want to call him, Mr. Fucking Fit. I don't give a shit about Mr. Morrison and his fucking Sinn Féin or whatever you call them. Not worried about you, Mr. Morrison. I'm not fucking worried about you here, Mr. Cool. I'm not a fuck with you anymore. Right, Mr. Morrison, you've said your bit. Now shut it. Right, now, thank you very much, sir, Mr. Paisley, for keeping order for me there. Thought I was going to have to get in there full scale rat. Mr. Morrison doesn't seem to understand. I've got a black belt, you know. I ran the back of your fucking neck. Why, Mr. Morrison, I fucking warned you, you bastard. You might take it up to you. I'll slap him. Hold on, Mr. Fiddy, let me alone. I'll knock your fucking, you bastard. Now, hold on, you two. Fucking pinion bastard, you fucking talk to me like that. You fucking bastard. What are you doing with those fucking battles, are you bastard? Oh, for fuck's sake, you're wrecking the fucking place, Jerry. Sorry, my dad, I was only trying to get a drink, you silly wee bastard. You spilled all my drink all over the fucking place. Silly bastard. Right now, come on, let's have a bit of order here. God's sake, we're getting fucking right out of order. Right now, we're going to go to you, Dr. Gath Fitzgerald. I take it you'll be making preparations for the Pope's visit to the south. Yes, sir, and I'll be putting out banners and making cakes and candy apples and... Do you honestly think, Mr. fucking Fitz Celtic, do you honestly think the Pope's going to come down to you and sink his false dicers into one of your fucking candy apples? In front of millions of viewers? For fuck's sake, I your fucking age, you silly, insulting bastard. Right now, Mr. Paisley, that's enough now. We've had enough of this. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, we want to go on to this issue. And we must give it very careful attention indeed about the unemployment changes in Northern Ireland. Yes, Margaret Thatcher has managed to fuck up a lot of people's benefits as usual. Now, we have an inside audience in the studio tonight who will be asking advice as to the changes in their benefits. Now, we have an elderly pensioner at the back there. Yes, you, madam, you with the yellow cardigan on there. What seems to be your problem, dear? Well, I'm 75 years of old, Mr. Cole, and my name's Jemima Sims. Well, get on with it, love. What's your problem? Well, I was getting £60 per week until the new changes came in there. And now I'm only receiving £15 a week. How am I meant to live in that sort of money? And who are you posing that one to there, Mr. Sims? I'm asking Mr. Busy that one. Well, Mr. Sims, I would say that uh, uh, you would need to do a little bit on the side in order to get by. 
But I'd be afraid of catching AIDS or VD, Mr. Biz. No, I wasn't talking about that. I wasn't talking about it. I'm talking about a wee job in your local sweet shop or something. Not uh, prostitution, Mrs. Sims. I wasn't talking about that. Sure, I'd be afraid of getting done for in the devil. Oh, Mrs. Sims, you'll be surprised the Social Security are not that hard on anybody at Mrs. Double. No, I'm not talking about that, Mr. Biz. I'm talking about the double in the bed, the gang bang. Like Mrs. Sims, I think you're a fucking sex maniac, Mr. Cole. What sort of woman's this to bring in? Well, I'm, I didn't understand that Mrs. Sims was like that. Sorry, Mrs. Sims. Jerry Fit. What, are, what have you to say there about Mrs. Sims? Well, I'd say it's a pretty fucking wage up there. Uh, for fuck's sake, she's only an old pensioner, you know. Hey, Mrs. Sims, I'll sort you out, love. I'll sort you out. I don't want you to help me, Mr. Fit. Sure, I'm a very helpful man, Mrs. Sims. What do you worry about me? I could sort your problem out just as good as Mr. Pity. Oh, but you're a fucking thing, you know, aren't you? There was fucking no need for that, you old bastard, you. I was here to fucking try to help you out, you call me a fucking thing, you. You fucking fat old bastard, you. Right now, Mr. Fit, that's enough now. We'll just go on to someone else. Sorry about that, Mrs. Sims. I'll just have to fucking sweat it out. Now, we're just going to have to go to somebody else. There's someone there in the back seat there with a green jumper on. Yes, you, the one with the funny looking face. What's your problem? My name's Robert. And I've got a problem. You fucking say that again. You see, I used to go about on a side of crutches. But, but they would take off me, so they were. But you feel like a ton of shit, too. And I was wondering if, if we could get better facilities. Things like walking frames and, and commodes and wheelchairs. I think I'm a wheelchair stuck in your fucking mouth, for fuck's sake. Well, and we also need commodes, too. That's twice you've said commodes, for fuck's sake. You must have three fucking arseholes. Now, hold on here. Mr. Fit, you answer Robert's query there. How the fuck he meant to answer a query like that? Fuck's sake, he sounds like somebody with a fucking plastic bag wrapped in his fucking head. Hey, Robert, why do you need a commode, son? Oh, well, I'm always shitting myself, so I am. Um... It's because you're living in Northern Ireland, because I would put the shades up. No, it's nothing to do with that. It's incontinence. <coughs> oh, so I hear. Uh, well, I reckon if your mother or your father, Robert, goes out and buys you a bag of pumpers, but uh, that'll cure your problem, you know what I mean? You get a nappy air, see around your earth, will you be all right? Then you wouldn't need a commode. Oh, but Mr. Fit, you haven't seen the size of my shit. The fuck, I don't want to fucking see the size of it either. Look, Robert, I'm sorry, but I, I can't help. Yes, you are sorry, Robert, but uh, that's a problem you'd need to take to the medical profession. That does nothing to do with your benefit being cut. Mind you, I think the brew would be doing you a favor to cut your throat, never mind your benefit. But nevertheless, I suggest you go and throw yourself in the lagging there with a couple of concrete bricks strapped to your neck. Now, we're going to go to that gentleman in the front row, just you there with a the pink jumper on. What, what's your problem? Well, Mr. Cole, I was getting 40 pounds a week until the new changes came in there. And I'm only getting 21 pounds a week. And there's no way I could survive in that sort of money. I'd like to ask Mr. Fett what I could do. Well, say my name, right? No, Mr. Fett, actually, I'm not afraid to admit that I'm gay. That explains why you're only getting 21 pounds a week, you bent bastard. Yeah, that's why. Now, hold on, Mr. Fitty. Fuck, leave me alone. He can't help me. He's fucking gay. Hold on a minute there. Uh, fuck Jerry Fitz after his fucking hole of an AIDS victim. Look, Mr. Fitz, let me tell you something. I'm not an AIDS victim. I'm very careful to whom I go with, you know. It's not just any old Tom, Dick and Harry. It's more fucking Dick than Tom and Harry. I know what you're like, you fruity bastard. Now, hold on, Mr. Fitz. Leave me alone there. Get off his back. Right, Mr. Fitz, get on with uh, Simon's problem there. Well, Simon, if as you say, you're single, I can only imagine... They've made a cock up somewhere. Oh, the cock stuck up his fucking horse. That's where it is. Right now, there's no need for that, Dr. Pace. I'm sorry about that, Simon. But uh, we don't seem... Uh, sorry about that. Sorry about that, but we don't seem to be getting any further here. So the Social Security shake-up is at an end now, and I want to thank you all very much for posing your questions to our MPs. <laughs> Now, gentlemen, just before we go off the air, we couldn't go off, mind you, without giving the ITV telephone a mention. We had a marvellous achievement there not so long ago when the ITV telephone raised over £22 million pounds nationwide. And here in Northern Ireland, we raised nearly a half a million pounds. Now, what I want to know is how our politicians and MPs and whatever else raised some of that, mon some of that money. Now, firstly, Danny Morrison... How much did you pledge, and how did you get the money raised? Well, John, the lads and I done a fun run. Huh? You must have been running away from the RUC after robbing a fucking post office or something. 
No, hold on now, Mr. Fizzy, you're fucking wrong, all right, now. Also, Mr. Cole, before we was interrupted there, we've done a sponsored run down in Newton Arts Road, but uh, unfortunately, uh, Martin McGuinness was trailing around the Gone Street, where he underwent a major operation of his face elder. And by the way, Mr. Cole, we raised uh, ten pounds. Thank you very much, Mr. Morrison, and I hope Mr. McGuinness' face is worth a looking at now. Right now, Jerry Fit, what did you do to raise money? Well, I done a bit of shopping in uh, Primark. I managed to steal a hundred pounds with the clothes. I got knickers, bras, a couple of jumpers, and uh, two cute fucking coats, like fucking uh, leather ones, too. Well, how did you conceal all these stolen goods, Mr. Fit? Well, I went up into Falls Road, actually, and uh, employed a couple of uh, fucking ankle snappers or tea leaves to fucking do the pension for me. They done my dirty work. I was directing them in what to steal. And oh, I know how you got your fucking house now in London, Mr. Fit. I know how you got your money there. No, I got my house in HP, Mr. Paisley. Exactly, fucking handbag pension, you finian bastard. Now, hold on there. No need for that, Mr. Paisley. There's no need for that at all. How much did you, much did you get uh, raised anyway, Jerry, just as a matter of interest? I told you, fucking hundred of a pay. That was queer fucking going like. Now, Dr. Paisley, how much did you pledge and how did you raise it? Well, I pledged 500 pounds for the first man that stuck a bullet in Jerry Adams. But as usual, the fucking missed. I also took pensioners on a day trip to Kirkcubbin, armed with a leather whip. Oh, see now, what sort of outing did you have there? Well, it was a very pleasant one. The bus driver was sponsoring me 50 pence for every lice I give to the pensioners. Well, Mr. Pierce, how much did you raise then from that little whipping session of yours? Well, we raised about five or six thousand pounds, which was an incredible amount of money to raise. Well, from a matter of interest then, Dr. Paisley, many pensioners was on the bus. Well, there were seven pensioners, Mr. Colin, unfortunately. One of the pensioners had a disastrous accident. <coughs> oh, Jesus, fuck, I'm coughing mucus up all over the place here. Yes, she had a disgraceful and a deplorable accident on the bus because I got a bit carried away with her. What, you got carried away with a whip? Yes, I knocked the fuck out of her with it, to put it politely. But she's all right now, she's confined to a wheelchair. Right, and uh, that was the end of their day out then, Mr. Paisley, was it? No, no, it was not, Mr. Cole. No, it was not. There was worse yet to come than that. Well, on, I get a drink here, fucking damn. The mucus was coming up all over the place. Oh, just that snatter went down like the Titanic. Oh, that's better now. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Well, what do you mean by that, that the worst was yet to come? Well, on our way home, we stopped off at a supermarket. And I got off the bus and went into the supermarket and purchased two boxes of sacks of salt. Two boxes of salt? What for? To rub into the pensioners' wounds. Now, that, uh, every time I heard a squeal, I was taking 50 pence out of their purses uh, to go towards charity. Well, to see you do anything to get money raised anyway, Mr. Pierce, I know not to send my wife on a bus trip with you anyway. By the way, gentlemen, anybody out there, of course, has got a ploy to get rid of their wives. That would be a very good idea to send them down to Dr. Paisley there at the Martyr's Memorial. Maybe you'll get rid of them for the day for you or even for good. Now, Mr. Fitzgerald, how did you raise money? And how much did you uh, pledge to the ITV telethon? Well, Mr. Cole, I raised about six inches. And I raised it by exercise of the right arm. So mine wasn't known as a telethon, but a wankathon. Oh, I never thought you had it in you, Mr. Fitzgerald. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, for fuck's sake. My word, there's been some shiting in here the night, so there has. That's terrible, Mr. Fitzgerald. Look at the state of that. Look at the trousers there. are covered in shite. Fuck's sake, this is disgraceful. Well, my listeners, I'm afraid that's the end. That's all we have for our program tonight. But I want to thank all our MPs and uh, members, loyalists, Sinn Féin, anybody you name them, they're all here. I'd like to thank them very much for coming into the program and making it possible for tonight. So thank you very much.